Hey guys, welcome back. So, still in Maya here, and we're just checking out exactly what we've got. We've got pretty much the main part of the model in. Got his body, trousers, gloves, boots, belt, pretty much all we need. So now we're just going to work on the rest of the little details. Uh, you've noticed over in the left hand corner, I've brought up a poly count here. Uh, you can do that by going to display, heads up display, and then choosing the tick menu next to poly count. And this will show that we've got uh, 6,009 vertices, uh, sorry, polygons, that's fine. And almost 12,000 tries, which to be honest these days is nothing. Obviously we're going to be adding to that with a few of the little details. So let's go ahead and get started in getting those in. So now we're just going to go into uh, import. And we're going to start bringing in some of the smaller details. Uh, for the main part of the body. Let's go into exports, medium res, and let's start bringing in things like the uh, the beard. In fact, that's not really a small detail, it's actually an important detail which I actually totally forgot about. So let's import the beard and we'll retopo this. Obviously we can't have these many polygons going into a game. Um, I'm thinking I might just bring in the low poly a slightly lower polygon version from ZBrush instead of retopoing it all. As I think that's probably going to be better overall. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're back in ZBrush. Uh, all I'm going to do is head to my Subtools palette and we're going to go and select the beard. And we're going to see exactly what kind of poly we can get out of this. So let's drag this down to subdivision 1. It's pretty low poly. Let's try one higher. So, looking at 2000 polys, I'm sure we can do that. We might be able to remove some edge loops and things like that as well. So, let's go ahead and export the beard. Let's just um, go ahead and overwrite. Actually, I'm just going to put a one at the end here, just in case I do decide to retop over the higher resolution one. So we've got that back in place. Let's go ahead and switch over to Maya again. Alrighty, so let's just go ahead and remove his beard. Selecting it and pressing backspace. Let's go to import and let's do beard MR1. So it's pretty good. Thing we could do with removing some of the edge loops. So let's go ahead and start doing that, just tidy it up a bit. Okay, so with this in here, we're just going to uh, right click on our mesh and then just choose edge. That'll put us in uh, edge selection mode. <clears throat> so we want to remove a fair few of these uh, lateral edge loops. So let's turn off our low res for now. Oh, don't know, like I actually put that in the right layer. So just going to go to select our body, go to the low res layer and press add selected objects and turn that off. So let's see what we can do here. So just selecting the beard, we're going to go to edge selection mode. And we're just going to click on one of the edges to select it and hold down shift and double click on the next edge. And that will select the entire edge loop. Uh, I'm going to do pretty much every other one. unless it really starts to affect things which it might well do around this area and let's just have a look at the results <clears throat> so hold down shift and double click on one of the edges and it'll select the edge loop now just press control and delete on the keyboard and that will remove the selected edges and if we go onto vertex selection mode it'll also remove all of the vertices <clears throat> which are along that path as well so that's lowered the poly count for us a bit. Let's see where else we can uh, shave off, no pun intended, uh, shave off a few edges. So let's uh, switch back to edge selection mode. And let's go ahead and see if we can remove one of these edge loops. So hold down shift and double click on the edge loop. And hold control and press delete and I think we should be able to get rid of an extra one of these 
so double click on that and the corresponding one on the other side to keep it even control delete so let's see what else we can do down here we're going to have a lot of edge loops which uh, are going to need editing so let's go ahead and start removing some of these try and be as accurate as we can in getting rid of ones on the other side at the same time it's going to do every other one again until we get to here I think because it seems like we're going to get a lot of stretched faces there otherwise so that should be okay control delete doesn't mess up the shape too much double click on this and hold down uh, shift sorry and double click on that control delete and let's see if we can get rid of some of these vertical edge loops as well so a lot of these are going to stem from up here which is going to be fine but I don't think we're really going to be able to collapse them down too much more So what we'll do is we'll switch over to our vertex mode and we'll go up to uh, edit mesh and choose uh, merge, sorry merge vertex tool and we'll bring some of these down to triangles and we'll merge them down just to remove a few of the unneed, unnecessary polygons down the front because it's, it's not going to affect the shape too much being so we have a higher uh, higher density of polygons down in this section. So I'm just clicking on a vertex, holding and dragging over to the one to the left of it or to the right of it, depending on which side of the mesh we're on. And that's going to collapse it down <coughs> and remove a few of the polygons along with it without losing too much of the shape. So I'm going to do that in a few places around here. needs be to uh, keep the shape together we can leave a few of them just put pop a couple of triangles in though merging these together is actually keeping the shape together a little bit better as well so I might merge a couple more down just remember you've got to do it evenly on the other side as well you don't have to really but for the sake of keeping things tidy it's always a good idea Remember to drag to the right vertex, otherwise you'll merge it to the one in the background instead. That looks pretty even. And we've reduced the poly count further. We're looking at 1540 rather than 2000. And around the back, wow, we can do a lot around here. I think we could do with actually removing a lot of the actual edge loops. Let's switch back to edge mode. Um, we'll just choose selection mode now over on the left hand side. And we're just going to double click on a few of the edge loops here. Control and delete. And we'll do the same along here. Control delete. And control delete. So now I've cut it down to almost half of the poly count that it was before. And we could do it even further if we wanted to. So let's go ahead, go out to vertex selection mode, go to edit mesh, and then do the merge vertex tool. And I'm going to merge some of these vertexes over. Or vertices, I should say. So 
So remember the beard would probably be animated as well. You know, just a bit of wobble or or bounce or something to it. So not a whole lot, but it'd be nice to have a few uh, <clears throat> a few edge loops here and there, which will help uh, get a little bit of extra life into the model. But the chances of seeing the back of the beard are extremely slim, so we don't have to worry too much about that, as long as the main parts are done. So it keeps a lot of the shape. Then we could probably go in and remove a couple of the edge loops from the side. So let's go into the edge selection mode. Go back to our selection tool up in the top left. Double click on these edge loops. That'll take the whole edge loop all the way around the mesh. So let's control delete that. And we should be able to get another one. I don't think we need to really. Yeah, let's maybe get that one as well. So that's not going to go around the whole mesh. Let's find out why. Because it goes to a point here. That's okay. Let's just select the corresponding edge loop on the other side, which I believe is this one. So hold down shift and double click that. And we'll control delete that. Have a look at the results. It's fine. Alright, so now we've got it down to half of what it was, so we've saved 50% of the polys on here. Could probably do a little bit more as well if we wanted to, but our poly can is looking absolutely fine the way it is. So, yeah, let's just leave it the way that is, except we do have a bit of an issue going on here. So... Just see if that's due to anything that we did. Doesn't look like it. Well, probably was, but that's okay. Let's just redo those. That's okay. Alright, so let's see if we can tidy this up a little bit. We seem to have a bit of uh, a bit of weirdness going on here. So let's go ahead and select vertex mode. And we're just gonna flatten these out a little bit. So select the corresponding vertices on each side. We'll select the move tool. And we're just going to bring these back just to uh, to keep the flow of the mesh right. So press shift to select multiple vertices. And we're going to move these so that we actually have flat polygons rather than getting sort of the actual polygons themselves looking triangular. So remember to do both sides at the same time and it'll affect it evenly. And that's looking a lot better. Let's just sort out these two here. And these two. So that's a little bit more uniform. I need to bring these out a bit, I think. That's okay. Alrighty, so that's looking a bit more normal. We don't have any random random spikes coming out. A few little bits left to tweak, but to us once the normals have been smoothed, I don't think we're really gonna notice that too much. So let's just check that out. If you go into object mode and select the beard, uh, head to normals and then press soften edge. And yeah, it's looking a whole lot smoother. That'll be absolutely fine. So let's turn the rest of the low res on. And there we have it, we have our dude with his beard. So let's go ahead and select the beard as well and add it to the um, 
by right click adding it to the low res layer by pressing add selected objects after right clicking. So now we can turn the whole thing on and off. And let's just go ahead and do one more thing and that's just checking out the <clears throat> all the small details now. So if we go on to import, we'll import the beard braids around his beard here. We'll also import the glove charms, so that's the glove rivets there, we definitely want those. And we'll also import the glove charms as well. <clears throat> there we go. So it's going to be things that we want to set off from the mesh anyway, so um, that's all good. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do anything seriously over the top here. Um, these are all quite high poly. Uh, if we turn that off, we're looking at 15,000 faces altogether. So uh, naturally, we obviously don't want those in the game. So first of all, we're going to sort out these uh, braids, and to do that, we're just going to replace them with cylinders. So we're going to make sure we've got polygons selected here. We're going to select cylinder, and we're just going to drag it out on the mesh, on the uh, grid. And then we're going to move those into place. And to be honest with these, I don't think I'm really going to be projecting any detail onto them. I might just strap these to the mesh. And just put a bit of random texture over them afterwards. This is such a tiny detail. That'd be fine. So I we'll, think we'll probably end up keeping those in place. Let's just select those and deselect the new cylinder that we put in by holding down control and clicking on it. And then we'll hit backspace to delete those. We'll bring in the lower res mesh. And you can see that's roughly in position. Uh, we can go to we can duplicate this, uh, control D on the keyboard, move that over to the side, and there we have it. So that's all the braid, braid details in the right place. Um, I'm not going to do any sort of texture projection on them whatsoever, just because I don't think there's going to be much point, because um, I don't think we did much to texture them in the first place. So I'll probably just do a bit of manual texturing on those in Photoshop later. So let's sort out these rivets now. Um, for these, we're just going to use a sphere. So I'm going to drag a sphere out onto the background. And we're going to go to the attributes editor and click on wherever our sphere is. Yep, beard one, polysphere one. And now we're just going to reduce the poly count on it. So around about 8 sides, now we'll go 12 sides, just to make it a little bit smoother. Subdivision height, we're going to take down to about 6. And from here, we're going to right click on it, and we're going to go to face selection mode. We're then going to select all of the vertices just underneath the hemisphere of it, and press delete. Sorry, all the faces at the bottom hemisphere. I'm going to go to um, I'm going to deselect anything we have selected and go to object mode, and then I'm going to move this into place. And I'm just going to rotate this around, scale it down. This doesn't have to be perfect because. Again, I might not even bother doing any texture projection on these. Might just do it manually and paint a texture on in Photoshop over the UV layout. 
just going to duplicate that so control D on the keyboard and move it along move it into position yeah, it doesn't have to be amazingly accurate being so they're not going to be uh, projecting anything onto it as long as it's embedded in the surface of the glove, that's fine. Okay, so I'm just going to select all four of these, hold down shift and click on all four of them. I'm going to duplicate all four of these and move them back. And just going to rotate them around the opposite way. I'm going to have to edit each one of these manually, but at least they'll be largely in the right position. So just set the one of them, move that into position there. Select other one. Set the move tool and move that back in. Rotate it around a little bit. And just generally get these into position. That'll do it. Final one. And then we can mirror them over, hopefully. There we go. So that's all the little details. Let's just go ahead and select all of them. So get the selection tool, hold down shift, click on all the ones you want to select. And from there, we're just going to go to mesh and combine. And then we can go to Mesh, Mirror Geometry, minus X axis, press Apply. And it's not going to mirror it because we didn't set the, uh, the center point to 0, 0. But that doesn't matter. It's uh, just easy enough to select them all. Uh, if you go to the face selection mode, and we'll just select all of the faces. Deselect all the ones we don't want. And then we'll move these into position over the other side. Just drag along on the x axis, line them up thereabouts. I'll do fine. Okay, so one last thing to do here, and that's the charms on the uh, on the gloves. So let's go ahead and select a cylinder. Drag that out onto the surface and drag it up. And from there, we'll once again go on to where it says beard MR1 P cylinder shape. Um, that's not the one. Poly cylinder 2, that's the one. And we'll just take the. Let's have a look, subdivision on the axis, let's just take that down to uh, say 16 and we'll drag this into position as well. Now we're definitely going to want to project the detail onto this because we carved in a fair, fair bit of detail onto it. So we're going to have to make sure that this is positioned right. So first of all, let's uh, Let's turn off our low res mesh so we can see just the bits we need. Let's move it into position over the right hand side. Obviously we need to scale it down a fair bit. So let's just scale that. Now this needs to envelop that little detail here. So let's go ahead and get it lined up as accurately as possible. 
going to go into my wireframe viewports just to see if I can get this a bit more accurate. And it looks like it's lined up fairly well. It's going to shrink the scale down so it's tightly hugging hugging the form rather than massively enveloping it. Let's make sure we got it right from the other angles. That looks about right to me. So let's head back into perspective viewport and we can see that we don't have anything sticking out. So now what we want to do is set the um, set the axis to 0, 0 so we can mirror it over to the other side and it'll be exactly the same. Okay, so what we want to do now is just mirror this over to the other side. So to do that, and because our pivot point is sort of in a weird position, um, well, it's not in a weird position, it's at the center of the object, which makes perfect sense. But um, to keep everything in the right place when we export this out, uh, for instance, if we export this out and re-imported it back in, it would appear at 0, 0, because that's where it thinks the pivot point actually is. All we want to do is sort of create an offset. So we're going to edit the position of our pivot point, and to do that, we're going to click the um, Snap to Grid option at the top there. Hold down D while we've got our Move tool selected, and you see it changes the logo here. Move that over to the center point on the grid, and then to duplicate it, we're just going to go to um, Edit, and then Duplicate Special, and click the little option box next to it. And make sure you've got the scale set to minus 1 and then press apply and that will scale it in across the x-axis in minus one over to the opposite side now it looks like it may not have been totally accurate with the position of this maybe but so it could do with just editing the position of this a little bit so I'm just going to move it, just turn off the snapping option and move it back slightly, tiny little bit, and no, that's not behaving correctly. And just going to make sure it's overlapping without too much of it sticking out the sides. Of course, we did this asymmetrically, so it's going to be slightly different. It's going to scale it a tiny bit. Don't know if that's getting smaller or bigger. It's going to make it a tiny bit bigger and reposition that where we need it. This is where pivot points get a little bit annoying when we move them. So I'm just going to go to modify and uh, press center pivot. And I'll move it back to our original point, which should make modifying it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to make sure this is enveloping the little high-res version of the glove charm, which it almost is. Let's just scale it a little bit, just to fit around it. Camera's playing up some, but that's good enough. It's fine. It's encapsulating it. So what I want to do now is just again reset that pivot back to zero zero. So switch to your move tool, activate the snapping function to the grid, hold down D on the keyboard, and just drag that center point back to the center there. And from here we can go up to modify and freeze transformations. And same over the other side. And then we're just going to select both of these meshes and go mesh combine. There we go. So now you'll see that our transform points are 0, 0, 0. So that's going to be central. And that's kind of critical. So that's that done. Now it's not so important with the beard braids because we're just going to be gluing them to the mesh essentially. So that's all right. Let's just go ahead and remove these rivets because we don't need them anymore. Let's just select them and delete. And let's just see what happens when we smooth this out. So select the low res rivets and go soften edge. 
Do the same on our cylinder. In fact, I might just leave the cylinder as it was. And then we'll go ahead and turn our low res on. So you can see we've got our little details here now. So let's go ahead and move on to the apron and get that in. Sorry, the belt buckle actually, that's the next bit. So let's turn it off. Actually, let's just go ahead and add all these bits to the low res. So let's just select everything. And I'm going to click on the low res, right click, and press add selected objects. Let's turn that off for now. Oh, so I forgot. Uh, okay. So let's just go ahead and select everything there. Looks like we forgot to delete, well, I forgot to delete the high polygon version of the charms. So I'm just selecting everything. Holding down control and click and dragging and clicking on that. And then we should be able to just delete the high res from underneath there. Probably going to have to do the same over this side. So I'm just going to drag over everything. Control click on that and on the rest. And then press backspace. There we go. So we have no more high res there. Okay, let's um, go to file. We'll import. We'll do the belt buckle now. So belt, belt buckle medium res and import that. And I'm just going to select all that and go to mesh and combine. So really this isn't going to be a whole lot of detail. So once again, I'm just going to select the cylinder. And we're going to drag that out. Oops. And drag that out onto for some reason. Oh, we've got snapping turned on, that's why. Uh, just going to drag that out onto the grid itself. I'm going to set the translate properties to 000, zero, zero just so we don't have to faff around with that again. And then we're going to go to modify and freeze transformations. I'm just going to set that point uh, where, where it is currently. And I'm just going to rotate this around. Doesn't want to constrain. Okay, let's just go into the perspective viewport. Uh, sorry, the isometric viewports. Rotate this around. Just going to move this into position. And you notice that this needs some editing. So. Let's just drop into our attribute editor in this perspective viewport. Let's just have a look at what we can expect to happen. And we want to go to the actual shape itself. So you see where we got polycylinder. We don't want mesh, we don't want transform, we want polycylinder. And from here we want radius to be a bit bigger, not that big. Okay, that's really not helpful. Just go ahead and scale it so that it envelops it. The angle's actually not too bad, that's fine. We need to flatten it down a bit. So I need to tweak the rotation. And I'm just going to scale it out along this axis here. So it encapsulates the entire thing. And that's good enough for us. Let's head back to perspective. Let's just make sure our pivot point is set again. So turn on snap mode. Hold down D on the keyboard and drag that to zero zero. That's good. So just going to go to edit, delete all by type, press history, and that's our belt buckle. Let's go ahead and add that to the low res layer. And that'll disappear, which allows us to be able to delete the high res of that. And I think largely that's all of the details we need. 
we'll tweak things a little bit further when we need to. Obviously that belt buckle is a little bit large. At the moment I'm going to be using that as a cage uh, with which to project the texture onto it and the normals onto. And then we can fine tune it a little bit more. So that's our guy. That's everything that we'd need to get going on anything further. So let's uh, move on to the next chapter where we'll sort the apron out. And in fact, we should be able to do it in this current chapter. In fact, let's should be able to do it in this current chapter, that's fine. So just had to check the time there that I was doing. So let's go on to import. We'll uh, import the apron. That's quite a lot of polys. Let's turn off the low res for now. Now, I'm not favoring the idea of once again retopologizing this, being as I already created the base topology in Max any in ZBrush anyway. So let's go ahead and get ZBrush back up. Just dragging ZBrush over. It's going to be a little bit cut off because of the resolution of the screen, but let's see if I can just resize that to fit in the window better. There we go. Okay, so let's grab the apron. Let's head down here. Here's our apron. And let's just go to the geometry and drag that all the way down to the low subdivision level, which still has plenty of polys, probably a few too many so we can clear them up. But overall, it's tidy, it's gonna work. Let's just see what we can do with it. So I'm just going to uh, export this as uh, low res essentially. So I'm just going to do apron. Uh, I'm actually just going to set that as apron low res just because might as well. Head back into Maya and import. And we'll just put the apron in. And yeah, it largely covers the form. It needs to be um, inflated a little bit to envelop everything better, but overall that keeps the form. Cool. Okay. So how do we expand these polys to encompass the rest? It's kind of like a bit like inflating it in ZBrush. So let's see what we can do to make that better. Okay, one thing just need to check. Now, of course, it's importing various sections due to our polygroups. Uh, Max never used to do this, so it's kind of new to me. Let's just go ahead and let's just start over. Uh, let's just delete everything we have there. Uh, we're just going to go import We'll do our apron medium res, just so we've got a base to work from. Let's make sure we select the entire mesh and then press combine. Uh, yep, so that's all one object now. Let's go import. And then we'll go to our apron low res. Uh, there should be an option in here. Yeah, it's just going to group everything, isn't it? Okie dokie. Well, let's import it anyway. And let's just add a new layer to this with the. So just click this button here with the high res selected for the apron, just to create a new layer with that object inside it. And we just want to join everything together here because it's going to be. Uh, this isn't going to work very well, I don't think. Let's just select everything and go mesh combine and of course wherever things in pieces the vertices are going to be joined together so let's go into vertex selection mode select everything and we'll go into edit mesh and we'll then go to merge and we're going to reduce the threshold well we shouldn't need to reduce it past that let's just try applying it and close 
and doesn't look like we've got any errors there. Good way to check, just select one of the vertices down the center, move it around. Let's turn off snapping. Yeah, so that's solid. It's watertight, that's good. Um, any other places where that could have gone wrong? Uh, that's fine. So if that's fine, then the rest of the mesh should be okay. Everything should be joined together. So something to keep in mind. Okay. Um, good way to avoid that. Just don't. Um, just group everything under a single poly uh, poly group from ZBrush before you export it. So that's all good. Now let's um, go back onto object mode. Turn on our high res for our apron, and we just want to make sure that this is acting as a cage, making sure that it's sort of enveloping everything. As we can see, there are bits sticking out through it. And what we want to do here is make sure that uh, in Max there's a a tool called the push modifier, which is really handy for this kind of thing. And it basically moves all of the faces along their surface normals. So it moves in the direction that the face is actually pointing. It scales it up that way so it creates extra thickness. And what we're going to do here is a similar sort of thing, only it's called something different. Um, here we're going to do um, what's it called? Uh, transform component. I'm going to click on transform component, press apply. We're then going to switch over to our scale tool. And we're just going to scale that up. So I don't think that's working, is it? No, it's just just scaling it up. So let's just try pressing transform vertex. No, God, I hate my. Alrighty, so that's the best way to do that. Okay, my bad. Um. Let's uh, figure out how that works. We've gone to edit mesh and then transform component. Uh, let's just try dragging. Oh, that's the way to do it. Just drag on one of the axes and this will move the whole lot. So, really, this is going to be great for baking out a cage, but we don't want to do that just yet. Let's leave it as it is for now, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. We just want to edit what we've got so far. So let's just turn off the high res. Um, we're just going to go right click and go onto edge selection mode. And we're going to remove some of the more pointless uh, edge loops, just like we did last time. So I'm going to double click on some of the areas where we don't need an edge loop. So especially down the bottom area, I'm just going to select every other edge loop here. So let's hold down shift and then double click on an edge loop. Control delete to delete it along with any vertices that may be along the way. And from here, let's see if we can get rid of another one. Let's just select another one of the uh, edge loops, double click, control delete. And it keeps most of our form. That might end up being a problem there, so I'm going to leave that in. So it's in an area which is going to flex when the body moves. So that's going to be okay. Don't think we need this one down here. Let's double click that. Now we will. It's got a bit of a silhouette to it, so that's fine. Um, let's see. I think that's it. It's not too bad. Not too high res. Not too low res. Uh, I think, yeah. It's good to leave a few of the edge loops in around the upper body area because it's going to be flexing with the body if he moves and bends and such. So that's going to be fine. So let's um, add this to the low res. So we've got this selected. Go to object mode. We've got low res. Right click on it and choose add selected objects. Let's just make that visible for now. Ignore that sticking through as be editing that a little bit later on. Wonder if we've got any might even end up not having that there until Yeah, we'll figure that out later. Let's go ahead and sort out the pouches. So let's um go to file, import, 
and we'll do the apron pouch yes actually yeah import and apron pouch and oh, we've got the clasp on the back as well we'll see what to do with that later on uh, apron pouch medium res so what we can do here is just kind of fake all of this let's just select our uh, our apron and let's just move the apron to its own layer so it's going to select the apron and press create new layer with selected objects and turn off the low res for now now we've got topology here which should allow us to just extrude a point so let's go ahead and try doing that so let's go into uh, face mode and let's uh, add this to a different area object mode let's select the pouch courses in different pieces so let's select everything press control and deselect the apron we'll then go on to mesh and combine and let's turn off the apron for now and put this in another layer of its own and let's turn transparency on on there so we can see what we're doing it's just clicking in the extra box let's just rename these so I can actually tell what we've got so this layer is the apron pouch high res save and this is the apron itself okay so we got the apron pouch that's in transparent mode so let's see what we can do with the topology along here let's go into edge selection mode uh, we're going to go onto the move tool but we'll first just select this edge loop by double clicking on it so it comes underneath the pouch here then going to go on to edit mesh and we're going to do slide edge tool and what that's going to allow us to do is just slide this edge loop downwards so hold the middle mouse button and drag it and we can actually get that to pretty much follow the outline of the pouch almost perfectly so that's good we'll do the same with this edge loop here so double click on that edge loop and we'll slide this upwards there we go and I'm going to select many select these edges here just to move it down a bit so that lines up pretty well it's going to manually grab these vertices and this one over here and I'm going to move them up move that one up so the pouch is a little bit asymmetrical so that's fine and what we're going to do here is kind of cheat a little bit we don't need a hollow in there for a start so we're going to go into a, a face selection mode and we're going to hold down shift and just click on each one of these and you can see where I'm going with this we're then going to uh, click on the extrude function up here and we're then just going to extrude these faces out so that it encompasses the actual pouch itself and then we're just going to go on to the vertex mode go on to edit mesh and then we'll go on to merge vertex tool and we're just going to merge these back so we've got sort of a uh, triangular kind of appearance to it 
Looks like I may have extruded that out a little bit strangely, but yeah, let's just undo that first of all. Let's go on to extrude mode. And let's just drag that out a little bit more accurately this time. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but being a little bit tidy would be a good idea. Okay, uh, vertex mode. Just click in the background to deselect things. Uh, edit mesh and merge vertex tool. And we'll just drag these vertices back. So that emulates the shape of our pouch there. Um, obviously needs a little bit of a clean up, so let's just go on to our move tool. And let's just select these vertices down the bottom, at the bottom of the pouch. Just going to drag a selection box there and then just deselect what I don't need. And I'm just going to drag that out here just to give a bit more of a bulge to it so that it actually encompasses the bottom of the pouch. And then I'm just going to select and deselect the ones I don't want. Just so it covers a bit more of what we've got there. Adds to the wobbly nature of it, and just grab the ones at the back, bring them down, and it looks like we have something strange going on. So it looks like when I extruded that out, um, we may have had a few polys around the back, so I'm just going to undo and See what went wrong there. Let's go on to the face selection mode and mainly select these. Now, there's nothing selected around the back. So Let's extrude those out. Now this is what I did last time. What did I do wrong? Let's go on to vertex selection mode and move this vertex. So we somehow have an extra edge loop in there. How the hell has that happened? I really don't get Maya sometimes. Well, most of the time. Okay, let's um, just select all the vertices and I'm just going to merge them. So, edit mesh, merge. There we go. It's behaving normally. Right, okay. I think I might just go back to using Max. So, vertex mode, let's go into merge vertex tool. Drag these back. Kind of worth pointing out that it's still pretty new to Maya. So all of its quirks 
They're still quite new to me. So let's go ahead and finish sorting this out. So in face selection mode, let's go onto the move tool, select all these. In fact, I'm going to go onto edge mode just like I did before and select this edge loop around here. And just going to bring that out along this axis. It's going to do the same with this edge here. Bring that out a bit. And same on this side. Okay, so again, same with these edges here. Let's just bring them out so it encapsulates everything. Same with this. Make it a little bit wobbly as well, so adds to the shape. And I can tweak a few vertices in just to keep the shape together. So we really want to follow that shape around so it doesn't just like it's just sticking out. After all we're going to be putting tools in here as well so so we want to make sure that it definitely envelops the mesh beneath it but it doesn't just like it's uh, some sort of weird kangaroo pouch. So Let's just bring this in just to keep a bit more shape there. Make a bit more gentle. And that'll do it. So what I wanted to do before, I'm just going to move the corner of this up a little bit. And I'm going to select the vertices around here and just pull them down, so it's going to enable me to just tweak the shape of this a little bit more, so it's just a little bit closer to the original high res, even though it's like a few hundred thousand polys lower. Do the same with the rest. If it would kindly stop deselecting what I want to select. This is going to create a little bit of shadowing on our mesh when there's lighting cast on it. But we don't actually have all the added polygons of having an actual hole there, so. There we go. Cool, so that keeps the shape. I might sort of wobble this around a bit just to change up the pattern, the silhouette, a little bit more. create something for light to bounce off. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is, once we've got all the low res done, uh, this is what is essentially going to be our game mesh. Uh, I'm going to UV map it, and then we will actually, when it comes to the texture baking, um, I trust uh, 3D Max's push modifier a whole lot more than I trust this transform component thing. Um, as I've it's tried and tested, by me so many times. So I think I'll jump into Max to create some cages which are for uh, texture projection. 
and I think that's going to end up giving us some better results. So I have Max at the ready as well once we've got through this. Okay, so we have an apron, fantastic. Let's turn on the rest of our low res. And uh, that belt buckle is going to be shrunk down later anyway. The reason it's so big at the moment is because I can't decide what to do with it at this point. So that's pretty much our guy. Um, we do need to put... I don't think I'm even going to bother with the rivets. So I'm just going to texture those on. We don't need them there. And the same with the clasp at the back on the... Uh, at the back we might just put a cylinder in there or something like that. We'll see what happens once we've done a bit more. So, uh, that's our low res. Um, let's just go ahead and do object merge, and we'll do soften edges. And that works pretty well. Let's just turn off the high res. So, that's going to work for us. I will sort out that belt buckle. So now, uh, we're going to go on to UV mapping. And from there, we'll go on to making some cages and then the texture baking. And that's all the boring stuff done. <clears throat> so, um, hope you've learned something useful there. I've learned that I don't particularly like Maya too much. Uh, I think Max has spoiled me a bit. And now I have a new appreciation for Max itself. So... I think one last thing that we'll do before I call the chapter here, we might as well finish it off and get its eyes in there. So let's just go ahead and let's turn that apron back on. And we'll then go to import and we'll bring its eyes in. Uh, I do believe eyes. There we go. So let's. Uh, course let's just turn off the low res select the eyes uh, mesh and combine and the apron's got its own so let's just turn off that and we'll add the eyes to the same same layer as the the actual apron pouch as well so all we're going to do here is uh, use a couple of spheres so let's just go to create polygon primitives and then sphere and click on the little option box to the left of it and we'll have a few options that we can play with and we'll just drag that out in the center and let's just close down that There's no point in having that there let's go to the attribute editor and click on polysphere 1 so the radius, not too important now, but we'll go on to the subdivision axis. <clears throat> and the eyes have got to be pretty smooth because we want them to reflect light pretty well. So I think we'll just leave them at 20. It's a few extra polygons, but it's worth it for eyes in my opinion. So from here, uh, we'll do a freeze transformations and then we shall move it into position let's bring the sphere up and from here we'll just rotate it round let's just do it in our viewports from the side rotate that around Let's just move that into position it's our halfway point the hemisphere is overlapping with that one then we'll just scale it down So it looks like it's got a bit of astigmatism going on there. Let's just increase the size of it a bit. 
and there we go. So an eye there. Let's move that over. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and set our pivot point to the center again. So let's uh, hold down, well, let's just press snapping in the top again. Hold down D, snap that down to the central point. We'll do the same here. Hold down D, drag that to the center. Head back to perspective. And then we'll go edit. Uh, duplicate special, do it again, minus one along the axis, and press apply. Now duplicate it, then go into select both of these meshes and go mesh and combine. And that's that. Let's just turn off the pouch layer and we'll add that into our low res. So have the eye selected, right click and press add selected objects. And that should be everything, I believe. So let's turn on the low res, turn on the apron. Oh, not the HR, just the full apron. There we go. Okay, so let's hit Control and S to save. And I think if we select everything, go to Edit, delete all by type and history. There we go. All right, so we are done with our game resolution mesh. There'll be a few other things we need to do, like adding in the tools. Um, but I think I might just export the low res from ZBrush, and we'll do that in Max next. So have Max at the ready, guys, and I shall see you in the next chapter. But right now, I'm going to head to bed, being so it's one o'clock in the morning. So have a good night, guys, and I'll see you soon.